Hi, I'm Dawn with Drucker Diagnostics, and today we're going to review the basic functionality and operations of your Sero 12 blood banking centrifuge. If you're looking for instructions on something specific, check out the chapters located at the bottom of this video, and you can skip right to it. All right, let's get started. Basic Operations Guide, Sero 12. Part 1, Unboxing. Your centrifuge arrives securely packaged from Drucker's manufacturing facility. Pay attention to this accessories box. This holds all the accessories that you'll need to get your Sarah 12 running. Once you've got your centrifuge and your accessories box unpacked, this is everything that you should have. All right, now that we're all unpacked, let's look at what each of these does. First, we have the centrifuge. Your Sero 12 arrives with the rotor already inside of it. And before we can open it up, we're gonna need to plug it in so we'll actually look at that rotor in a minute, but just trust me, it's in there. From our box, we pulled our line cord. Now this cord is going to work for any outlet in the United States. Doesn't matter the voltage, if this plug works, if it fits your plug, you're good to go. Now, if the cord that came with your centrifuge doesn't fit your plug, contact customer service and we'll get you one that does. And last but not least, we have your manual. This manual is a great reference for any questions you have about your Sarah 12. It covers a lot of the same things that we'll be talking about in this video. That's it for the unboxing part. Now let's talk about how to get your Sarah 12 set up and spinning samples. Part two, setup. Now that we've got our Sero 12 unpacked and we've reviewed what the accessories do, let's get our centrifuge set up and ready to spin. Start by placing your Sero 12 on a flat, level, sturdy surface. A countertop or bench top will work great. Make sure to leave at least six inches or 15 centimeters of clearance on either side of the centrifuge so that it can stay properly cooled with enough airflow. Also make sure to leave at least 21 inches or 54 centimeters of clearance on the top of it so that you can make sure to open the lid. Once your centrifuge is set up, grab your cord that we got out of the accessories box and plug it in to the receptacle on the back of your centrifuge. Next, go ahead and plug that cord into a wall socket. Make sure that your wall socket is easily accessible because you'll want to be able to unplug the centrifuge in case of an emergency disconnect or for cleaning and maintenance as needed. Now that your centrifuge is plugged in and plugged into the wall, look at the back panel of the centrifuge and locate the power button. Switch it into the on position. Now, go ahead and place your centrifuge where you would like it on the bench. You should see that the front panel now has all of the display windows illuminated. This means that your centrifuge is receiving power and is ready for use. With the Sarah 12 powered on, it's time to unlock our lid and take a look at the rotor. Now I say unlock the lid because the Sarah 12 comes with a safety lid latch mechanism that makes sure the lid stays locked anytime the rotor is spinning in the centrifuge. That lock also is engaged when the centrifuge ships from our factory. So when you pull it out of the box, that lid won't open right away. After you've plugged your centrifuge in, we're gonna need to look at the front panel to get to the unlock button. This is the front panel of the centrifuge. It's where all of your controls are. And we'll talk about all of them in just a minute. But for now, we need to focus on the stop unlock button, which is going to unlock our lid 
and let us access the rotor. Press that button. Now, you can access the rotor chamber by turning this knob on the lid counterclockwise, just a quarter turn. Now, you can lift the lid up and see the rotor here inside. This is a fully removable rotor. You can pull it out, simply lift up, and when you replace it, just place it down onto that central pin and make sure that it is securely seated. You should see just the very top of the pin poking out above the rotor. Your Cero 12 arrives with all genuine Drucker parts and accessories. If you need to replace or purchase additional rotors, make sure you only get authentic Drucker parts. Now, your Cero 12 can absolutely use all of the old Cerafuge rotors that you have, both the metal one and the plastic one. But if you need to replace or get any more, make sure you contact Drucker and get a genuine Drucker rotor. Any other parts and accessories might actually damage your centrifuge and could be a safety hazard. All right, that's it for our setup. We've gotten our centrifuge placed, plugged in, and turned on. We're ready to spin. Let's move on to the third part of this video and see how we load tubes and get a cycle going. Part three, operation. Now that we've got our Sarah 12 set up, we're ready to spin some tubes. I'm gonna walk you through your first spin, but before we do that, let's make sure that our Sarah 12 is plugged in and that the power switch on the back of the centrifuge is on. Now, let's take a tour through the controls. All of the Sarah 12 controls are found on the front of the centrifuge, right here. The RPM screen, which displays my currently selected speed in RPMs. I can adjust this using the up and down arrows to the right of the RPM screen. A single press up increases by 50 RPM and a press down decreases by 50. If I accidentally overshoot, I can use the down arrow to get back to my desired speed. Same thing if I accidentally drop it down too far. I can use the up arrow to return to where I want to be. Underneath the RPM screen is the RCF XG button. This button will toggle the RPM screen to show G-Force instead. I can tell that it's showing me G-Force because the screen here on the bottom will have the words RCF displayed in it. Now, when I have my G-Force displayed, in the RPM screen. I can use the buttons to the right of the RPM screen to adjust by G-Force instead of by RPM. I just need to keep holding in that button. And keep in mind that as I adjust either my RPM or my G-Force, that number will change dynamically to represent the new currently selected speed. So as I increase or decrease, the currently shown value is the one that I will spin. To the right of that, we have our indicator lights. The left-hand light lights up when the centrifuge is spinning. The center light lights up whenever the centrifuge lid lock is engaged. And the right-hand side lights up to indicate that lid latch is unlocked. The two lights on the left and middle are commonly illuminated at the same time. That's because the lid lock will automatically engage whenever the centrifuge rotor is spinning. The right-hand light, the unlock light, will illuminate after the centrifuge has come to a complete stop. The lid latch will disengage for 60 seconds, one minute, after the centrifuge has come to that complete stop. If the centrifuge is not opened during that time, the lid latch will lock in place again and you'll need to use the stop unlock button, which we'll cover in just a moment, to unlock it and retrieve your samples. If the lid is left open, the buttons will go dark, indicating that the centrifuge is ready for its next spin. Underneath those lights is the stop unlock button. This button can be used to either stop a current spin or to unlock the centrifuge if the lid lock engages 
and you need to access the samples. The button next to that is the start button. This will start a cycle with your currently selected RPM, time, and break parameters. The time display screen shows the currently selected time. This can be adjusted in the same way the RPMs were, using the buttons next to it. A single press will increase or decrease the time by five seconds. If you press and hold, that will increase or decrease the time by 15 seconds. And keep in mind, as with the RPMs, if you overshoot your target time, you can always use the down arrow to decrease. And likewise, if you decrease too much, you can use the up arrow to increase again. Next to that, we have a brake setting indicator. If the screen is dark, that indicates the brake will not engage to slow the rotor at the end of the cycle. If there is a line in that screen, that indicates that the brake will engage to help slow down the rotor. To adjust the brake setting, hit the menu button. The word brake now displays in the RPM screen and the words off and on can be toggled in the time screen. By default, the Serra 12 brake is off. If you want to engage it, simply press the up button next to the time screen and you'll see the word on appear in that screen. Once you're finished adjusting that, press the button to exit. The brake is now engaged. Next to that brake indicator, we have the menu button. This is used to access the advanced menu, which will allow you to adjust braking and other more advanced settings on the Sarah 12. And then we have the cycle button and the cycle indicator. The cycle button is used to create and manage your saved cycles. A saved cycle is a preset RPM or G-Force, time and brake setting that has been saved to your Sero 12's memory for easy recall. Your Sero 12 can hold up to 10 of these preset settings at one time. The cycle button allows you to create a new cycle by pressing and holding it after setting your RPM, time, and brake settings accordingly, or to toggle between different saved cycles that you've already stored in memory. You can also press and hold the cycle button to enter the basic menu, which will allow you to edit the RPM and time on a saved cycle. Now that we've taken a look at our controls, let's spin some tubes. We're going to start by hitting the stop unlock button to ensure that the lid lock is disengaged. Next, we're going to turn our lid latch a quarter turn counterclockwise and open the lid. The lid will stay up. You don't have to worry about opening it all the way, just enough that you can reach it. Inside, we'll find our rotor. Now you can load the centrifuge with the rotor inside of it, but like the centrifuge rotors, you can also remove this rotor and load it outside. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, as we load our rotor, it's very important that we make sure the rotor is balanced. That means that every tube we put in has to have a tube with the same weight, fill volume, opposite it in the centrifuge. Here's a little chart that shows all of the different ways to load the different tubes, different numbers of tubes, into your Serra 12. Make sure that whenever you follow these diagrams, the tubes you use are of equal mass, so they're equally filled, same size tubes. Now, if you don't have an even number of tubes, like if you happen to be spinning just one tube, you can always use a counterbalance tube that's filled with water or something else with a kind of similar volume to whatever you are trying to spin. If you loaded your rotor outside the Serra 12, like we did in this video, you want to place it back inside the rotor chamber now. Whether you loaded it inside the rotor chamber or outside, take a moment to make sure that that rotor is properly seated on the metal shaft. You should just see the top of the shaft poking out above the rotor. That's how you know that it's properly aligned. Once it's properly aligned, close the lid and turn the latch a quarter turn clockwise to secure. At this point, 
the lid lock will engage. And if you want to gain access to the rotor chamber or your samples again, you will need to press the stop unlock button. Now it's time to make sure that our RPM, time, and brake settings are as desired. If we're going to be running one of our saved preset cycles, we can just hit the cycle button until the name of our desired preset cycle shows up in the RPM screen. Once that happens, the presets for RPM, time, and break for that particular saved cycle will automatically load. If we're going to adjust on the fly, we just need to make sure that the RPM window, time window, and break window are showing our preferred values. To adjust speed and time, use the buttons next to them. To adjust break, follow the instructions that are showing up in the video on your screen right now. Once all of your settings are displaying as you desire, you're ready to run. Go ahead and press the start button. The centrifuge will begin to spin, increasing speed until it reaches the RPM that you specified either in your saved cycle or during your on-the-fly adjustments before this spin. Once it reaches that RPM, it will spin for your desired time before beginning to slow down. It will apply the brake or not, as you could specify. Once it finishes spinning, the centrifuge will beep and flash to let you know that it's done. The lid latch lock will unlock for 60 seconds after the rotor comes to a full and complete stop. Please keep in mind that you cannot open the lid until the rotor has completely stopped. This is to ensure safety. That rotor can spin quite fast and it's just not safe to be reaching in there until it's come to a complete stop. If the centrifuge lid locks again, you can always unlock it by pressing that stop unlock button. The centrifuge will automatically maintain whatever settings you just used. So if you want to run the same cycle again, all you need to do is switch out your tubes and press the start button and you'll be ready to go. If you'd like to adjust it or save a new saved cycle, you can do that too. Just follow the instructions already given in this video. Congratulations, you just spun your first tubes in your Sarah 12. Part four, cleaning and maintenance. All right, let's talk cleaning and maintenance for your Sarah 12. The centrifuge is designed to be very easy to clean and maintain, but it's important to follow the instructions exactly. First, always make sure the power is off and the power cord is unplugged before you start any cleaning or maintenance work. As a reminder, the plug and the power switch are located on the back of your Sarah 12. Once you've disconnected your power, put on appropriate personal protective equipment as per your lab's policies. Next, wipe down the Sarah 12 with isopropyl alcohol or 10% bleach solution of 5,500 ppm. You should only use either the isopropyl alcohol or the 10% bleach. Any other cleaning solution may damage your Sarah 12 and void the warranty. You should always clean and disinfect by putting the isopropyl alcohol or bleach on a clean cloth and wiping the Sarah 12 with that. Next, follow with a dry cloth to immediately remove any moisture. Never submerge any part of the Sarah 12, except the rotor, in any kind of liquid for any reason. That's all there is to cleaning your Sarah 12. Your Sarah 12 is designed to require no regular maintenance. All of the internal parts are self-maintaining. You may wish to calibrate the centrifuge. The rotor has an easy read photo tack strip on it. All you'll need to do is close the lid and run a cycle, and then point your photo tachometer device down through the clear lid. You'll easily be able to get a reading and calibrate the centrifuge accordingly. And that's all there is to cleaning and maintaining your Sero 12. Once you're done, always make sure that your Sero 12 is plugged in and turned on again, so it's ready to spin your next cycle. Part five, additional resources. We've gotten our centrifuge out of the box, We've set it up on its counter. 
We've learned how to operate it, and we've learned how to clean and maintain it. If you have any other questions about how to use your Cera 12, you can always contact Drucker Diagnostics and we'll be happy to help you out. If you would like to learn more about how to use your Cera 12, including some of the more advanced operations or anything else specific, some helpful links are popping up on your screen right now that you can click through and learn more. Thanks for watching and have a great day.